We have another tutorial video here for you on Leading Forex YouTube channel. Now, this video is going to be our final video on the chart patterns. You know, we've done two videos already on chart patterns. We've done the reversal patterns. We've also done the continuation patterns. Today's video is going to be on neutral patterns. Now, this series of videos is all about price action trading or trading the naked chart where we have no indicators. You just have to look at the chart and see what is happening on the chart to make decisions. And I have told you that by doing that, you need three layers. I think we've looked at three layers, not that you need three layers, but we've looked at three layers. We've talked about the nature of the market, where we talked about the market always making impulse and corrections. And then from that layer being the very basic layer, we also talked about the next layer, which has to do with the structure of the market. So by looking at the higher time frame, you are able to get the structure in which the market is trading. And then you can lower your way down gradually, gradually to the smaller time frames. So that is the structure of the market. We talked about that, and that video is right here on this YouTube channel. And then after the structure, is known, you need to look at what patterns are forming. And with the patterns, we talked about the reversal patterns. We also talked about the continuation patterns. And this video is going to be the final one on the neutral patterns. And the neutral patterns simply means that when you spot them or see them, it means that the market is heading no way or it going nowhere. You may only have to wait patiently for it to either break to the upside or to the downside in order for you to know the next move of the market. So they are called neutral patterns because they actually do not give you clear direction as to where the market will be going. When you see them, it means the market can go either ways. It can go bullish or go bearish. So yours is to wait patiently to see which side of the uh, pattern will be broken, whether to the upside or to the downside. And that is what we are going to talk about in detail in this video. Now, these patterns are already patterns that you know, because uh, during our discussion on continuation patterns, we talked about some patterns. And some of those patterns also act as neutral patterns. So they are not new patterns or another set of patterns you need to know. They are already patterns you know. So. The, the only thing is for me to introduce to you how you can take note of them and also trade them when they act as neutral. Is that okay? And there are not many, there are only four. I can even say there are two, just that because of where you will find them makes them four, but there are only two. So this video is not going to be a longer video. So just take your time and watch this video to the end so that you will get the full patterns in stock so that once you are looking at the chart, you know what you are looking for. Are we good? All right. Now, getting to the end part of this video, I may also make an announcement. So do stay to the end of this video. All right. Let's go straight to the notes and look at the neutral patterns. There are only four, like I said. So there are not many at all. All right. First of all, if you need to get in touch with me, these are my handles. I have Telegram handle that is at Kofi Dollar. I also have an email. You can send me an email, leadingforestgh at gmail.com. We also have a phone number that you can call me. If you want to call me, call me on this phone number. The same phone number is used on WhatsApp. So if you also want to reach out to me on WhatsApp, it's the same phone number, all right? That is that. Now, let's go straight to the patterns and finish them quickly. Now, the very first one that we'll be looking at is the ascending triangle. And like I said, this ascending triangle is part of the continuation triangles or the continuation patterns. If you watch the continuation video, I'm sure you might have seen this triangle. Now, we said that triangles are very similar to um, the, um, there's a word I want to, I want to use. 
they are very similar to another set of patterns known as the wedge. Good. Now, the wedge we will either have an ascending wedge or descending wedge, or a falling wedge or a rising wedge. And we said the triangles are very similar to wedges. <laughs> That's the plural. <laughs> so one thing you need to take note of it is that this ascending triangle can also act as neutral triangle. Now, why neutral? Although if you look at this, you will see that it is in the uptrend, but it can act as a neutral triangle because when you see it, the trend can either be broken to the upside or broken to the downside. Now, the difference between this triangle and the rising wedge or falling wedge, I said it in the previous video, that when it comes to the top of the, the triangle, the higher highs are on equal level. But the rising wedge, they are not on equal level. That is the difference. That is the only difference. As to the support, it's just the same as a rising wedge. But the only difference is the resistant levels. Uh, the triangle resistant levels are on equal length or level. But a rising wedge is not like that. You will see difference. You may see a rise in the in the resistant levels. Hope you understand this. But if you go to watch that video, which is uh, the continuation patterns, I'm sure you'll grab the details. So sometimes when you spot this ascending triangle, which is in a bullish trend, the market can break to the upside, retest and continue the trend to the upside. And it can also break to the downside, retest, and then make its way to the opposite direction. It doesn't matter. The trend is an uptrend. It can break out to the downside and then continue or make its way to the downside. So whenever you see an ascending triangle on the chart, whilst you are looking at a continuation to the upside, you must also be having it at the back of your mind that this can also act as a neutral triangle where you can receive the break to the downside. So you, you, you always have to exercise patience and see where the break will happen, whether it's going to break to the upside or break to the downside. If it breaks to the upside and retests, then it means the continuation is happening. So at that point, that triangle is acting as a continuation pattern. But if it breaks to the downside and retest and continue to the downside, it is acting as a neutral pattern. So get that. Ascending triangles can act as neutral patterns. So it can break to the downside or break to the upside, retest and then continue. That is the very first one. So like I said, this is not a new pattern. It's already an old pattern, which we talked about in the, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, the continuation patterns. Let's look at the next one. This is the descending triangle. This is in a downtrend, all right? Now, this yellow symbol that you see here is to tell you that the market can choose to break to the upside or break to the downside. That is why I, I put this yellow sign here to give you a clear indication that the market can break to the upside or break to the downside. Are we okay? Good. So this is the descending triangle, which is in the downtrend. So when you spot it, it means the support levels are going to be equal, but the resistance levels can choose to uh, not be equal. But what you are looking at it is the support level because it's in a downtrend. So when the support levels are equal, then you are seeing a triangle. Now, with this triangle, although it's in a downtrend and it's acting as maybe a trend continuation pattern, but at the same time, it can also be a neutral pattern because the break can choose to happen to the upside, which will signal a reversal. And then it can break to the downside, which will signal a continuation of the trend. So when you see a descending triangle, you have to exercise patience and see what is going to happen, whether it's going to act as a neutral pattern or act as a continuation pattern. So we have ascending triangle and descending triangle. 
they are also neutral patterns, just as they are continuation patterns. Is that okay? Good. Now, I won't waste my time because the next one is something very new, this one. This is called the symmetrical contracting triangle. Now, this triangle is acting or looking like a pennant. If you have watched the continuation videos or the continuation uh, pattern video, you will see that we have a pennant and a pennant is a bit small in size, but the triangle is big in size. That is the only difference between the pennant and then the triangles. Now, this pennant, if you see the pennant here, it is not the same as triangles. Contracting triangles, uh, what is often happening is that the resistance levels are reducing in size and the support levels are also reducing in size. I've seen it. So it's contracting. This is reducing in size to the downside, although they are resistance, but they are reducing in size to the low side or to the downside, whilst support levels are also reducing in size to the upside. Under normal circumstance, resistance levels supposed to be in an uptrend be, be, be on a higher side. It's supposed to be receiving higher highs, something like this, higher highs. So you'll be seeing higher highs in terms of resistance. But in this case, the resistance levels are reducing or contracting. And then the support is also contracting, giving us a triangle. So when you see this contracting triangle, which looks like a pennant, what you should know is that it's acting as a neutral pattern. The trend can be broken to the upside or broken to the downside. Now, these contracting triangles, we talked about it in the continuation video, that when you see them, when there is a break, then you know that they are on the upside. But in this case, you can see them in a downtrend or in an uptrend. And whenever you see them, they are contracting triangles. So you need to wait and see where the break will happen whether to the top side or to the downside. When it happens to the top side, then it means a continuation. If it's in an uptrend, it means a continuation of the trend. But if it's to the downside, it means also to the continuation of the trend, if it's seen in a downtrend. But if this is seen in a, an uptrend, but a break to the downside, then it's signaling a reversal. I don't know if it makes sense. If this is found in an uptrend, but the trend is not broken to the upside, but broken to the downside, then it means a reversal. So it can break to the upside or break to the downside. So whenever you see this uh, contracting triangles, you should know that you are seeing a neutral pattern. Now, the last one I will talk about, which will end these patterns, is this one here. This one is called expanding triangle. I don't think we've ever talked about this one before. So this is maybe the new one we, you, you may have to take note of. So this is an expanding triangle. Whilst the other one was contracting, this one is expanding. That is the difference. So this one, you see that, yes, the re resistance level is giving you the higher highs. The same way the support levels is also giving you lower lows. Under normal circumstance, if we are receiving higher highs, we're supposed to be seeing higher lows. I don't know if my terms are easy to understand. For instance, something like this. If it's an uptrend, this is a lower low. This is a higher low. This is also another higher low. It means you are seeing them on the higher side. The support are on the higher side. The support levels, this one is lower low. But the next one that has been seen is also low, but not as lower as this one. So this one is a higher low. The next one that you are seeing here is also low, but not as lower as this one. So it is also a, low, a, a higher low. So the lows are happening on the higher side, whilst the higher highs are also forming in terms of resistance. So this is an uptrend, right? So when you are seeing higher highs, and lower highs or higher lows. Let me put it that way. Lower, no, higher lows. <laughs> that is the right term. Higher lows. So higher highs and the higher lows tells you that you are in an uptrend. A downtrend, you will be seeing something like this. 
So you'll be seeing lower lows and then lower highs. Lower highs. So lower lows and then lower highs. It's on the high side, but it's still, this one is also on the high side, but it's not as high as the previous one. So that's why it's a lower high. So you'll be seeing lower lows and then lower highs. Then it means that you are seeing a downtrend. So this is an uptrend. This is a downtrend. So this expanding triangle uh, defeats any of these rules, whether to the higher highs and lower highs or higher lows or whatsoever. It's making higher highs, all right, and then making lower lows. <laughs> so you will see that this is a triangle, but it's expanding, an expanding triangle. Whenever you see an expanding triangle, you should also know that you are seeing a neutral pattern. Can be broken to the upside or broken to the downside. So if it breaks to the upside, you wait for the retest of it, then you can take your buy. But the, the disadvantage of this triangle is that it often gives you a very high stop loss because you may have to place your stop loss on the previous low, which is here. So looking at your entry and where your stop loss is, often the stop loss is very huge. The stop loss is always very huge. That is the only disadvantage when you see this expanding triangle. So if the stop loss is very huge, then you make sure that your lot size is also reduced. Once you reduce your lot size, it will help you to manage your risk very, very well. And the same way, if it breaks to the downside, it means you are going to take your trade on the reversal here. And once you take your trade on the reversal here, it means the last higher high becomes your stop loss. So you see that the difference from the entry point to the top of the higher high here is also very huge. So if your stop loss is going to be very high, always make sure you reduce your lot size. Because if maybe your lot size is maybe 0 0.10, and then you are targeting 100 pips, and then a stop loss of maybe 100 pips, fine. In this case, with this expanding triangle, you are seeing a stop loss of about 200 pips. So if you should go with the same lot size, it means you are going to lose 200 pips if the trade should go against you. So you will have to reduce this lot size. So instead of using 0 0.10, you may use 0 0.05. So if you should use 0 0.05, a stop loss of 200 pips will be $100 which is going to be the same as a stop loss of 100 pips for 0 0.10. I don't know if this is making sense or confusing, but under risk management, maybe we'll, we'll do more videos and go into details when it comes to risk management. I've, but in some of my videos, if you have watched most of my videos, I have already talked about bits and pieces of this risk management thing in some of the videos already. So if you're having challenge in terms of risk management, you may have to go and watch these videos that I have on the channel. The whole playlist is there. Uh, forest training for beginners, forest training for beginners. If you go to the description of this video, you will see the link. Or at the end of this video, you will see the link to the playlist will pop up. The end of this video, you see the link to the playlist. So once you click on that link, it will take you to the full playlist, all right? So this is the last, uh, pattern you will see in terms of neutral patterns. After this, we are done with the neutral patterns. There are only four, just as I told you. But now, before we end, how do you trade these patterns in order to get the success of your trading or to be able to win? I have put some few notes over here. Let's deal with that note. It's very, very important. The very first note uh, point here is that Trading chart patterns, the best way to trade chart patterns is to wait for a break and retest. A break and a retest. It is often the best way to go. It doesn't mean that you will not get losses, but in case you are to get losses, you may only get 
if you are, you are taking 10 trades, you may only get maybe two losses and get about eight wins. Yes. If you will stick to the break and retest, you may make maybe out of 10 trades, you may make two losses and then win eight, which is about 80% win rate and it's better. So the best way I have seen and a few people have also seen is to wait for the break and retest. But a sad part of the whole thing is that sometimes, the point two, sometimes the break and retest would not happen. It, sometimes it doesn't happen. You may not see it. It may just break and then continue its way to the upside. Or it may just break to the downside and continue its way to the downside without a retest. Yes, some of these things will happen. When it happens, just count it as not your trade setup. Sometimes when we see those things, we are forced to chase the price and enter the market. And once we violate the rules and then we enter the market, thinking that the trend will continue down or to the upside, then you see the reversal. So it would have been better if you waited for the break and retest. That would have been better than just entering, chasing the market because there's no retest, so you are chasing it. You are entering. And then once you enter, before you realize the market begins to make the opposite direction. And then you are stuck with a lot of losses. So once it breaks and doesn't come back to retest, just assume and take it as one of the trades that is not your setups, that is not in line with your rules. That is one thing you must take note of. So bear it in mind that sometimes the break and retest may not happen. You may only see a break. The retest wouldn't come. It happens. Now, the next thing I want to say is that traders who will want to chase the price after the break without a retest might end up in a bad risk management practice. And I've explained that already. I've explained that already. And you will realize that where you're supposed to put your stop loss, now you are forced to put your stop loss somewhere else. Because the rules and the parameters are not being followed. So what happens? You violate the rules or you go contrary to the rules. And before you realize, you are in trouble. So for you to be on the right path and for you to get things right, stick to the rules. All right? If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Even if the whole week you don't get a setup, it's fine. Your money is still intact. It's better than trying to chase the price, enter a trade, and then you lose. If it takes even a week and you don't have a single trade to trade, that's fine. The market may be moving all right, but it is not in line with your style of trading. So you let it go. Let it go. You don't force it. Now, the last point I want to say is that discipline is key to success. Sometimes we are so desperate to make money. We are so desperate and we, we hate to see the price moving without we being in the market. As traders, that's one thing we hate. You see the price moving so huge and you are not in any of those trades, and you are like, why? I need to chase this, this price and also make some profit. And once you violate your rules or you break the rules and you enter, then the danger comes. The trend the market was busy going, you see that it's no more going there. And gradually, you see it beginning to re reverse against you, and you are like, ah, the ghost of your land against you or what <laughs> it is not like that it is because you have not stick to the rules you have not uh put in the the right procedures you did not stick to the discipline measures that you put in place by your own self that is what is causing you so discipline is key if you follow the rules you set and you lose, you take it in good faith because that one, you know that yes, you did the right thing, 
but just that it didn't work out. And that is better. You, 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 you accept that in good faith than for you to enter into the market and then the market will, will go against you whilst it is not in your plan. It's not part of your rules. That one is more painful. And that will look some way when it comes to your judgment. Will you say the market has not been fair or you have been in haste to enter into a, a certain rules that are not part of your rules? So discipline is key. Just discipline yourself. Get the rules set for yourself. If it happens, fine. If it doesn't, you let it go. That is the way we should go with this market. Because this market will not always go your favor. But when you set the rules and you follow the rules, trust me, you will get more wins than losses. If you get a better strategy, you will surely get more wins than losses. So please stick to the rules. Let discipline be your guide. And once you stick to the discipline, you have no problem. Now, I'm ending this video, but before we go, I want to say that there are more notes and tutorials to share with you on this channel. But I also want to say this, as a trader, whilst you watch these videos that I'm producing, you need to know which direction you want to go. You need to be kind of getting your strategy out of what I am teaching here because you will not need everything that I have taught to take a trade. You will only need a part of it. So once you watch these videos, you, you cannot use everything in these videos to go into the market. Okay. Some may want to use price action. So some may want to go price action way. So when they watch the videos, yes, they will experiment price action, experiment indicators, experiment other way of trading that I have put out here maybe the support and resistance, or maybe the candlesticks patterns. So whilst you experiment these strategies, you should be able to settle for one or two. You cannot use all of them. You can't, but that one is a fact. So in order not to get you so confused whilst you watch my videos, I want you to know that whilst you watch these videos, you should be able to have a clear cut of the path you want to follow. Whether you want to go with the indicators, because maybe you might have tested a few indicators and you know whether they are working or not. Or you want to do the price action way. And with that also, before you come to that decision, it means you might have tested this price action kind of trading to see whether it will work for you or not. So you would not need everything I am saying over here everyone and what might work for him or her. So whatever I'm putting out here as content, although you are watching everything, the knowledge is good, but you will not need everything. At this moment, I need to be able to clearly spell things out so that you know what you are searching for when you come to this channel to watch the videos here. Do you want to be a price action trader or the naked chart trader? which is the videos I have made, or you want to be indicator trader, where a couple of indicators will guide you as to what trade you should take, or you want to use the patterns that I've talked about, or you want to use the candlesticks patterns because that is also there, or you want to use maybe the support and resistance kind of style, or you want to merge maybe price action with indicators. Maybe you want to merge the two or you want to do any other thing, fundamentals, which has to do with the news. Is that what you want to do? So you, whilst you watch these videos on this channel, you should be able to clearly spell things out and follow what you think will be easier for you to do. And then practice that 
And whilst you keep practicing, you will see where you are making mistakes. And please do well to keep a journal where you are practicing. It will help you to know the mistakes and why some decisions didn't turn out well. You will get to know if you are using indicators, you get to know that, okay, next time if this indicator does this and asks me to buy, I won't buy because the last time it did that and asked me to buy, which I bought, I didn't win. Or you may experiment that, okay, I did, it did this and said I should buy, I bought, I lost. It did the same thing, I bought, I win, I won, okay? It did the first thing, same thing, I, I bought, I lost. Same thing, I bought, I won. Same thing, I bought, I won. So it's two against one, okay? Do the same thing, I bought, I won. So three wins against one. So that will tell you that, okay, despite the fact that you lost one at the initial stage, the second and third and fourth were wins. So that is how you will be able to analyze and, and finally settle on a strategy. But in case you do not have the time or you do not have the, the plan of doing your own stuff, but you want to get a mentor, you want to get someone to coach you through his or her strategy or his or her style of trading, that will be up to you to contact whoever you love his or her style of trading. Get in touch with that person. Talk to the person and see if the person will be willing to do that with you, maybe for a fee or what, whatever. Talk to the person, yes. So that is where you may be needing someone's guidance in case you feel like you need to get a mentor. But this forest market, I must be honest and tell you that we all had mentors. I, have, I had mentors. I, I have had about three or four mentors, but along the line, I settled for one. Yes, at the end of the day, I settled for one mentor. And it has been one, that one mental style of trading that I have been doing since 2017 up to date. Although I've tested other mentors, but along the line, I settled on one. And none of those mentors, uh, I, I don't know how to put it, but all I want to say is that all these mentors I'm talking about, they all have strategies that were working for them. But... When I used their strategies, it wasn't working until I, I got one that I felt was okay or was helping me, was easy to understand. And, and that one, it wasn't even a strategy. It's, it's a guide that the person gave. Look for this, look for that, look for this, look for that, look for this, look for that. And then I had to go on the internet to start looking. And that guide helped me to become who I am by getting my own strategy. So what I am using to trade, it is not something that someone gave it to me, just gave it to me that these are the things you need use. No, it's something I searched for by myself. After I got the guide, just look for this, look for this, look for that, look for that, add them, experiment and see how they will turn out. Do the tweaking and settings, change the formation and those were the things. And that is how it took me so much time to be able to settle on something good. It took me more than two years to finally settle on something good that was profitable. So you may also have to take that pain or you may not have that time to take that pain, but you may want to pay for or get someone to give you what is already working. And I must be honest, those that I even paid for, something that was already working, didn't work for me. <laughs> you understand? It didn't work for me. About four people, yes, it didn't work for me. So take your time. It doesn't mean that if you, you talk to a mentor and uh, that mentor gives you something and it's also not working for you, doesn't mean that it may not work for another person. It may not be working for you, but that same thing might be working for someone. So please... Take note of that. There's no bad strategy out there. It only becomes bad when it is not working for you. Yes. And when once it is not working for you, look for something else. When you find something that is working for you, trust me, that thing you have found which is working for you might not be working for someone. The person might have also seen it, used it, and it is not working. 
for him or her. So that is how the market is. So there is no bad strategy out there. It's just that it's not yours. It's not your style. It is not working for you. Then you let it go. And then you look for something else that might be working for you. That is how you should see this market or you should approach this forest market that we are in. All right, so I will end here. I don't want this video to be too much long. Our Sunday review is coming. I will see you on Sunday with forest signals, market analysis, signals that you can trade when the market opens. Yes, it is coming. And I'll see you on Sunday with that video. Until then, take very good care of yourself and be good.